Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Prayer. Well, I went through comments. I didn't see any prayer requests, so we're going to do a general lift up. Um, <clears throat> my pastor that we prayed for, he called, uh, he, he texted me. And he said that they pulled three blood clots out and put in three stents. <clears throat> he said it was a major heart attack. They found no damage. There's, they said that we have nothing to concern about. You're going right back home to do what you're doing. Um, because usually when you have that kind of heart attack, it's major damage on your heart and you're messed up for good. Nope, nothing. He is good to go. And that's an intervention from the Lord. How do I know? Well, first of all, you should have damage. Second of all, he's needed to do that with those stents and those clots for a while now and hasn't addressed it. The doctor said, yeah, at some point you're going to have to have this done. And he kept putting it off and kept putting it off. Well, he finally had a major heart attack and they had to do it. But there's no damage. He feels good, strong, everything's cool. And that's God. You know, that's the, the, the heart attack had to happen probably to scare him and get him to start taking better care of himself. But he, he it let no damage. I mean, there's people that have had heart attacks because of the same situation. They ended up with 60 to 80 percent damage. I mean, they could barely even walk after after that for the rest of their lives. It, it ruined them. <clears throat> so that's intervention of God. Our prayers were answered. Thank God. And we're going to give thanks for that prayer tonight. And that's our praise report. Um, we're going to do, we'll do a general lift up for everybody. Uh, like we always do. We don't have any uh, prayer requests. But you guys have really been interactive about that video about the heart. Um, thank you. That's awesome. Because you should be able to come and talk about those things. Oh, Alan, if you're watching, I wasn't disagreeing with you. Um, I agree with you. What you said is right in line with the word. Um, I was just talking to Jennifer and Paul. And um, what I told them, because a lot of this stuff that's going on, people are really starting to see troubles and things over in the grace community. And all the things that I've talked about are, are manifesting. They're, they're, they're seeing it. The problem we have with society today is people, and I'm going to put it to you like I put it to them, people want the right now. People want the quick fix. They're not interested in the long haul. People will read a story, and as long as it's put in as simple terms as possible and as, re as relatable as possible to what they understand, they love it. There are books out there that I've read that never got any accolades, yet the story was superb. Well, I've always read I mean, there's times I'd go through two or three big books a week, you know, 600 to 1,000 pages each because I love to read because I really got into the story and the, the emotion tied to the story. There's so much more to words than what we realize. Then again, people give them a lot more power than they have to. But the deeper meanings in the Bible are for those who are looking for them. Not everybody looks for them. That's the problem. Now, it's real easy to get frustrated being who we are because we're trying to get people to see and people don't want to see. Well, that's because they can't understand it. God's blinded them so that they won't see it. They have to change and acquire that desire to want to seek him out. That's the only reason why we see them is because we do want him. We choose him. We want to be with the Lord. They don't. Even people who are Christians, they don't. Even ones who are saved, the Bible talks about. There's many that don't. And they so they don't understand the deeper meanings, just the basic concepts. Well, they get to the point where they're so lazy, they don't want to get deeper into these things. They just run and find somebody to tell them what they want to hear. And that's good enough for them. That's not where your salvation comes from. You must understand what this is. And what it concerns. But you see, you guys are seeing with your own eyes what's happening. You see what happens when people don't read the Bible and understand what it's telling them. There's my old pastor right there. And what it's telling them. They just spout off whatever hits, hits them and never go and look at it. Never even open their Bible and check for it. And it's terrible. Absolutely terrible. Yet all of this is in there. All of this is contained within the word. Now, as a new Christian, we start out in elementary school. As we grow, we graduate. Um, some of us hit, hit junior high, stay there. Some hit high school, stay there. Some hit college, stay there. Some hit, you know, 
uh, way out at the end of, of college, uh, the, the big PhDs and stuff like that. And it, we're all in different rates of growth. Now, much of that is governed by the lives we live. If we were pushed to read. When I was growing up, we were extremely poor. Most of the time, didn't even have a TV. There was nothing else to do. So we, I, I read. I read. I went through books like you wouldn't believe. And um, I don't even remember how many books. I probably read over a thousand books, maybe more. But it was just read, read, read. I was always reading. So I, I learned to appreciate the story within. And it started to become a skill that I could read a story and see the intent behind particular phrases. And that made the Bible much more relatable because I could see the story behind the phrases. It says this, but there's more back sitting in the background. And it takes a certain kind of eye to see those things. And not everybody does until your desire to search for the Lord grows. Then he shows you what's hidden behind those phrases. And it's nothing that ever that never contradicts the phrase or what the, the, the simple meaning of the phrase is. It's something that complements it and gives a better, more expanded uh, understanding of what's happening in that particular situation. Now, I still haven't found pastors that realize that part in Acts where Paul and Silas were uh, down there in Rome and that gal that had a spirit of divination was singing their praises and Paul turned around and said, hey, come out. And then they jumped on him. Well, when you read that story, the demon that was in that woman knew exactly. He knew he couldn't attack him. He knew exactly what he was doing. He did that on purpose to get Paul to cast him out. He knew he was going to get cast out. He did Paul to cast him out because he knew that the people that he had made friends with through that woman would put him in jail and stop him from spreading the gospel down there. But it didn't work because Paul also knew, if you read further, Paul also knew what that demon was doing. And he countered it and said, no, no, we're not leaving. Tell them to come down here and get us. They're trying to sneak us out. So nobody knows what happened. Nah, tell them to come get us. And he ended up getting to preach anyway. <clears throat> so these are things, when you read that story, you don't see that unless you're looking. And then you see that deeper meaning. And the, the, mo the emotion behind a lot of the things that are in there. When you read the story about Lazarus when he died and Jesus went and got him. And when you start to read and really pay attention to what you're reading, there's so much anguish in that one verse, Jesus wept, because it came home for him what death was. And he stared full in the face what it looked like and how it affected the people around him. And he was moved with such great love and compassion. And it's in the words. But most people just read through it and keep on going and don't ever think about it anymore. Most people don't even quote that anymore. But that is such an incredible story. Because of the emotion contained within it. People were running to Jesus, telling him, come on, Lord, let's go. We got to, Lazarus went. And they'd run back to Mary. And it was like a day trip. You know, he was pretty far away, well, off. They were running back and forth, relaying messages because of the urgency of the situation. And then they just gave up. And then Jesus came in and it fully dawned on him what was happening. And there it was. The When he was praying over the stone and sweating, like drops of blood. That's an actual medical condition. It's caused by severe stress. And the anguish in him and the fear in him of what was coming. He knew what was coming. L listen, he, he's been living in a human body. He knows what pain is. And he knew he was about to endure a lot of pain. He knew that the whole weight of the sins of the entire world, past, present, and future, were about to be laid squarely on his shoulders while he was on that cross. He had this knowledge. He probably knew the Holy Spirit was going to leave him because the Father can't dwell where there's sin. He was in full understanding of this. And so the anguish contained within the words is there. Now, apply that to other subjects. When what we talked about today in the video about believing in the heart, there's so much more there. There's so much deeper concepts there. Not as, as it's a physical heart we have to um, believe in or un and understand in, but it's a spiritual part. It's a much deeper spiritual connection with the inner man because we have an inner being living in this flesh. That inner being is the part that's saved. That inner being is the part that moves into the new body and goes to heaven. 
So when you start to understand those things, then a lot of these scriptures that most people pass over start to make a whole lot more sense because there's more contained within there. Now, with that being said, there is a simplicity in Christ we must stay connected to. Even though we understand a, a more complex understanding, the simplicity of Christ is the cornerstone. It's the key. It's the, it's the first love. And Paul talks about that in 2 Corinthians 11. Uh, we're going to read a few verses here. Uh, he had concern for their faithfulness because when you skip over this, the simple truths and forget them and move into more complicated things, you can get led into all different areas. He talks about that. Oh, that you would bear with me in the little folly. And indeed, you do bear with me. For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy, for I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So Paul is clearly saying that we need to stay in that simplicity. No matter what we know, no matter what we think we know, no matter what we learn, no matter how far we advance or grow spiritually, there is still that simple concept we are to stay connected to because that's where we all started that's our first love you can read that in the letters in the first three chapters of revelation he talks about that you go back to your first love you do well to stay connected to that no matter what you know that's where we have to stay that's the that's the first truth we're rooted in verse four for if he who comes preaches another jesus whom we have not preached or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received that's another verse that's hidden in there indicating there are two spirits, the actual Holy Spirit and the fake one. Or a different gospel which you have not accepted. You may well put up with it. He was upset with them. You guys will accept these, these false doctrines. Now, what do you see happening over here in all these YouTube channels? The same thing. They're going into... Uh, they, they, they say the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, but then they go into false teachings. They're getting into things they shouldn't be getting into. And they're teaching things they shouldn't be teaching. And they're not focused on the Word. And I witnessed this happen where they were going further and further away from the Bible and just talking from their own hearts. No, it has to be from the Scriptures. Verse 5, For I consider that I am not at all inferior to the most eminent apostles, even though I am untrained in speech. Yet I am not in knowledge. But we have been thoroughly manifested among you in all things. So Paul goes on, he, he talks about how he worked and stuff like that. That's some of the verses they use for making money on the gospel, which I, I absolutely can't do because I don't want money to be a factor, but that's that's my ministry. So he tells clearly tells here, look, you came in under the basic elementary principles. You need to keep your root in those. It's okay to extend roots out into other things, but this is where we all start. You must understand the simple basic things and David Wilkerson has an article here on word challenge that talks about that simplicity that is in Christ I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through her his subtlety so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity the utter exclusiveness I've told you guys before salvation is very exclusive that is in Christ as 2nd Corinthians eleven three. Paul warns us not to be corrupted away from the simplicity that is in Christ the Greek word for simplicity in this verse means singleness and exclusiveness. In other words, Christ is not a complex entity. The truth about him is very simple. Jesus is God. He is divine, born of a virgin, crucified and raised from the dead. But I'm afraid you're being corrupted away from this single exclusive truth. That's where our root lies when we first get saved. And our taproot must stay there. Otherwise, if we pull up that root and move it somewhere else, we go into another gospel, we go into another teaching, we go into another understanding, which many people have done. We have to stay connected very, very specifically to Christ. If we don't, we'll never, we, we go everywhere, all over the place. Paul then warns of ministers who preach a different Jesus. If he that cometh preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might bear with him. That's in verse 4. Paul was telling the Corinthians, in essence, you're listening to another gospel, not the gospel of Christ. You're hearing about another Jesus, not the one who saved you. And I fear you're going to be corrupted by this different Jesus, who isn't the real Christ at all. 
You don't know it, but you're being led away from the divinity of Christ. And I can't believe you put up with it. You're bearing with these teachers who are corrupting you. You don't even test what they say to see if it's scriptural. Right now, you're losing your discernment. Now, I'm going to stop right there because you guys have seen, you you literally witnessed with your own eyes that happening on uh, Lisa's channel with that statement. And everybody bought into it. You're, you're witnessing it with your own eyes. What he's talking about right here. You don't even test what they say to see if it's scriptural. Right now, you're losing your discernment. You're sitting under a demonic gospel with another Jesus being exalted, and you don't know where it's leading you. My message to you here boils down to this single verse. Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me, John 14, 6. Jesus' statement here is absolutely exclusive. No Muslim, no Hindu, no Jew, no Gentile. Nobody can come to the Father by any way except Christ, period. End of discussion, no debate on this. Just as Jesus asked his 12 disciples, he asks us today, whom do men say that I am? Mark 8, 27. The disciples answered, John the Baptist, but some say Elias, or it was Elijah, and others, one of the prophets. 8, 28. But Jesus' real question to his followers came next. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? In the New King James, I believe it says, but who do you say that I am? Verse 29. Our answer must be the same as Peter's. Thou art Christ. Verse 29, may this be our confession before the whole world now and forever. No matter what you think of David Wilkerson, he is right on point with this. Who is Christ to us? We must be established in truth first. It doesn't matter how complicated it is. It doesn't matter how legal, you know, which what direction you're going with that. You must be rooted in Christ first. Everything else falls in after that. There are a lot of people who are trying to go to heaven before they even get saved. No, you can't do that. Every one of us has to start at the beginning. Born again. When you're born, do you start, you, you immediately jump into college? No, you start as a baby. You grow. When we're born again, it's the same exact thing. We start as a child and we grow. But there's a lot of people who aren't doing that. Because they forget the one basic Simple principle that goes right next to believing who Christ is. And that's using his word to teach us. Studying about him, learning about him, finding out where we should be standing and walking so that it aligns with him. When we abandon the simple concept of Christ as our Lord, when we don't keep our roots in that truth, and the basic principles, and we start running to more complex things, we forget where we started because our entire awakening is taken up by all the complicated stuff that we're running to. We must stay focused on this. Everything else expands off of that. How can you talk about Christ if you don't even know Christ? How can you say you understand Christ if you've never gotten to know him? You've got to get to know him first. You have to stand in that one place and get fully rooted in him. That's why I tell new Christians, read the book of John, read 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. Stay in those books and keep reading them until you feel like you've really got a handle on who Jesus is. Then start to expand out because books like Hebrews and Romans are complicated but therefore, as you grow, just start in there and then work your way out from there. Go to Matthew, Mark, and Luke and just work. start working your way through the simpler books from there. Because if you try to do it all at once, you're going to fail because you're, the world's going to snatch you up. Just like the parable of the sower. If you try to do it all at once, uh, I'm a master Christian after only being a Christian for nine months. That's the seed that fell on the rocky soil and it sprang up real quick but then it withers away. Do you understand that parable now? That's what that's talking about. That's the, the deeper meanings of it. The simple meaning of, of it is people that believe and then don't believe. But the deeper meaning is people that want to do it all right now. They want it. To, I'm, that's it. I'm, I'm theologian. But they never even learned about Christ. 
And so they spring up, and then it's gone. And some of them, they don't even spring up. Because they immediately shoot off into other directions. Spend all their time going to church or all these different things. That's the seed that get eats up, gets eaten up with by the birds. Then the thorns and all that kind of stuff. That's all the junk we have in our lives. And all the things people are tied to. I, I say you almost can't save somebody who's dedicated and, and, and hooked on social media. That's the thorns of the world. That's the things of the world. It chokes them out. Chokes got out because they teach against that on there. Then you got the good soil. That's somebody who read it, got the concept, the simple concept, bore a tap root down into that simple truth of Christ. Then started to grow. Then started to expand the roots out and started to learn and started to mature and started to bloom. We all start in the same place. Where we end up is a direct result of where we put down roots. Do we put it in the truth or do we put it in whatever else the world has to offer? That's where so many people struggle. That's where they miss the mark. Because you'll never grow and you'll never bloom if you don't stay rooted in this. And it's such a simple thing. And most people can't even understand this anyway. Most people don't have a long enough attention span to understand a more complicated description or, or scenario. That's one of the reasons why I try to keep it as simple as I can and make it as relatable to real life as I can because, and that's my ministry, because most people don't get it and they're not, they don't pay it, they're not attentive enough to get it. So you have to keep it simple. You can't over explain the subject and you can't go into the real deep theological things, things because they don't, they don't get it. It makes no sense to them. I learned that the hard way. But if you keep it simple and keep it basic and make it applicable to their life and their problems, that has a grand effect on them. And then as they grow, you can carry them into the other places. So it, it, it's hard. It's hard. It, it, it's hard to do it. It's even harder to watch it happen. And to see people abandoning Christ willfully for something else. Usually, it's money and power. That's the two biggest driving factors in the world today, money and power. They can have it. They can have all of it. I don't want it. I've had my taste of all of it. It's not worth that much. It's, it's just it's just not worth it. Christ is my everything. If I didn't have him, I wouldn't have nothing. All right. Let's get into prayer. This is our peace first tonight. Let's get into some prayer. Lord, we come before you this evening to give you praise, honor, and glory, to lift you up, to honor you, and to thank you. I want to thank you for the this praise report we have about Pastor Dave, that he had no damage, had a major heart attack, went in, had the surgery he's been avoiding forever, no damage. You spared him so much agony. You spared him so much pain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for answering our prayer. When I reached out to them, my prayer team, they jumped on it. Thank you, Lord. That, I'm, I'm, that you've aligned me with a, such a group of faithful Christians. That we're all together in this. We're all working together in this to pray for people. Thank you, Lord, for sparing him. Thank you for answering these prayers. Thank you for listening to our prayers. Tonight I lift up my brothers and sisters by intercession and give thanks for them and ask for peace and strength and guidance and knowledge and understanding. But Lord, I ask that you keep their root in the simple truth of you and the gospel and never to be removed from it. That they stay rooted in that simple truth, but grow into the greater truths and being led by you, not the world, not me, not the world, not anyone else, by you into those more complex truths. I see it happening already. It's such a good thing. It's such an awesome thing, thing to see. But when we look at the world as a whole, as far as Christianity goes, we see pretty clearly most people aren't there. Lord, I shudder to think of what's going to happen when the rapture happens. But I, and I'm glad I'm, I'm glad it's not under my control. I, I don't I don't have that ability to do that right, and I don't want it. It's a terrible responsibility. I know I can't handle. That's why I'm glad you got all this under control. But Lord, how many of us, how many of us are attaining to the truth? Because I'm really starting to get a sense 
that it's not as many as maybe we think. It's a shockingly low number. But I'm not you. I don't know what you know. And I'm not going to speculate. I'm going to trust you. That those that are those that are ready to go are ready. Those that are chosen are ready. Those that are, have been called are ready. In every instance. So that everyone goes. There's a lot of deception in the world today. What you said in your word is extremely clear right now. We see it. So vividly clear. It's shockingly clear. But we worry about our brothers and sisters who are being misled. We worry about the ones who are wandering off into weird places. Wandering off and getting hung up in money. Wandering off and getting hung up in false doctrines. Not even reading your word. So Lord, tonight I lift them up. Sister Lisa, Tim, uh, uh, oh, there's a bunch of names. Lord, you know who I'm talking about. There's a bunch of names. Um, I'm in memory shot. Uh, Chelsea, I, I lift up uh, David, uh, Greg. I lift up my brothers and sisters, those that are preaching the gospel, those that are, have a channel, that you wrench them out of this world and reroute them back into the, your truth the simplicity of you and your gospel so that they remember where they came from. They remember their first love and then grow out from there. Because it seems like a whole lot of people have just run off into the dark. Especially in how, how scary it is on how much they've abandoned your word. Maybe I'm seeing things. I don't know, but it's terrible to see it because what they're putting out, what many of them are putting out, is contradictory to your word. Why? Why is that happening? Because it shouldn't be. We have your word everywhere. We love you, Lord, and we thank you so much for keeping the light turned on so we can see the path, for leading us into truth, for getting us in the middle and moving the obstacles out of our way because... And giving us a desire for you and a desire for the truth and desire to know your word more deeply, to understand the, the greater concepts, but still remember and stay in the simple concepts because that's where we all start. You said in one of your letters to one of the churches in the book of Revelation that they have abandoned their first love. They forgot their first love and you challenged them to repent and go back to that. That's the simplicity of the gospel. Believing the simple things and operating in a place of the simple things. Because we don't attain anything greater by going into more complicated things. It just sometimes leads to confusion. Lord, please make sure we stay where you want us to stay. And operate where you want us to operate. It's, it can be a terrible burden to, to have knowledge and know things. An even more terrible burden to understand how much of that applies or what's happening can cause actually quite a bit of pain. But if we stay in the simplicity that is you, we stay in the true, simple gospel and believe exactly who you are and who the Bible says you are and what our God has told us you are, we will never fail and we will never fall. And you will take everything and take care of everything after that. All we have to do is stay there. And you'll come get us. I trust you for that. And I hope everyone else does too. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much for answering the prayers, for leading us, for guiding us, for, for showing us the truth. Especially when somebody makes a statement that isn't true about your word, but we can go in your word and prove it. Test everything. And you've taken a lot of these simple concepts and really driven them home here lately. And I'm trying to share them with everyone possible. Keep it simple, stupid. Because if we try to over-explain or over-conceptualize some of these things, it leads people into confusion. And it can cause us, or the people we're talking to, to go into other areas. We don't want that. When they're ready, you'll let us know, and then we can lead them into the more complex understandings. You'll lead them into more complex understandings merely by them reading your word, which is why I harp on everyone to read your word. Read it, read it, read it. 
You will never get everything from me. You'll never get everything from anyone else. They will only get it from you and your word. Read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible. And if they don't understand it the first time, go back through to get it the second time. Simple things. And from this understanding comes peace. The great peace that defies all understanding because we're not trying so hard to be something better than other people. We're just trying to be in you. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God gave us a spirit not of fear but of power and love and self-control. Key elements in a dark world full of destruction and sin. In a world run by Satan where everything is being governed and dictated by him. And we stand alone as a bright shining light in this dark world. Your light emanating from us. We give you all the credit, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We honor you with this prayer and with the way we're walking. And Lord, please align us more and more and more with your will. That we fulfill what you have designated for us. And that we please you and please our Father in heaven in what we're doing. Help us to keep learning your word and to keep studying your word and to keep growing in grace and in your word. But always having that taproot driven down deep in the simple truth that is you. I pray in your name peace, the peace that defies all understanding for all my brethren on their households and on their lives and in their hearts. I pray love and trust for all of them in you and to look to you for any problem to go to you in prayer for any problem and to not hold back to pour their heart out to you to tell you your, their problems so that it's known because amazing things happen when that happens you love us and care about us so much and you do everything for us Lord, I pray we even acknowledge a small fraction of that, of those things. But it, all the ones we don't, we give thanks for those things that we don't know about. We give thanks for those things we don't know that you're doing. And those many, many blessings that are poured out at night while we're sleeping. Those many blessings that are poured out. We give thanks for those too. Because without that, without you, we have nothing. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. And thank you for this free gift of salvation, this simple understanding of a very powerful truth. Because all of this bases off of that. And without that, no one can be saved. Thank you for this time we have to come together and to pray. Thank you for this opportunity that I've been given to be able to share these things that you've been showing me with the world. I pray the impact would be greater, but it's not my will that's operating this. It's yours. But I do know we're planting a lot of seeds, and that's a good thing. Help us be in your truth. Help us walk in your love. Help us walk in your light. And help us live in peace while the rest, we have this last little bit of time in this world. And I pray that when you come, you find us doing exactly what you gave us to do. Nothing more, nothing less. And I pray that when you come, we are found worthy to be taken. Because we're doing what you gave us to do. We're leaning to you, holding on to that cross. Operating in faith to you. We are looking for our blessed hope, our great Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're looking for you, Lord. And we're waiting for you. And you're going out of your way to make this wait amazing. Look how much we're learning before we're going. That's awesome. Love you, Lord. And in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for evening prayer. Remember, rem please remember, if you don't remember anything else I tell you on this channel, remember these two things. Because these two things are what everything else hinges on. The simple gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay rooted in that simple gospel. Don't ever put your root in any other understanding. You stay in that and you don't know anything else, you're doing perfect. Stay in that and read your Bible, read your Bible, read your Bible. 
Go find a Bible you understand and have an easy time reading and read it. Study it. Learn it. If you don't have the electronic ability, get go buy a Strong's Concordance if you can. Go to the used bookstore. They have them in there. Cheap. Get a Strong's Concordance and look up the Greek so your deeper understanding will grow of the different concepts that are in there. But no matter how far you grow or how high you grow, stay rooted in that simple truth. Because from that grows all things. That's the spring of life. That's the water of life. Right there. And if you stay there, you can't go wrong. It's easy. I love you guys very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I'm so happy you guys get this. Because you all are growing too. And it's awesome. It's awesome to see that we're all growing together. But let us also stay. Keep that, that root where it belongs. Let us not wander into other truths like we see a lot of people doing today. Let us stay in that truth we know is true and is in this word. And that is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ did come to this earth and live as a man. Had a ministry. Started the church. Jesus Christ was unfairly charged with the debt of our sin. Well, unfairly charged by man, but... He came to do the work of taking on our sin. I can't, I can't say it was unfairly charged. But it, in a way it was because he had no sin. Died on the cross, was crucified, died on the cross, bore the weight of that sin, paid the debt with his blood, was buried and rose again on the third day to stand triumphant and then to sit down next to the Father, having all power and authority in his hand. If you understand that simple basic truth, I have it memorized. And it wasn't even something that I memorized. It, I just have it. If you have that truth, you're rooted right where you need to be. And if you learn nothing else, you're doing well staying in that truth. Because from that comes everything else. The whole Bible is centered on Christ. Old Testament, New Testament, every bit of it is centered on Christ. Let us stay where we know the truth is. And not let anyone lead us astray. And if somebody comes and gives us something that sounds weird or out of place... Go to the Word and test it. If it doesn't match the Word, nope, not interested. You're not being mean to them by telling them, sorry, not interested. That's not what the Bible says. And walk away. Simple. If they get offended, they get offended. That's their problem. They're going to have to face conviction one day and get it right. But if you tell them, no, that's not in the Bible, hopefully that'll get them thinking. And they'll go back and look for themselves and see that they're incorrect and change it. And maybe we can take them, take them to heaven, get them saved. Who knows? All right. Love you guys. See you in the next one.